What we now know about the Illinois couple in a scuba diving accident. We have the latest on this investigation. And another historic meeting between President Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un with the two leaders agreed on moving forward. WHBF is local for you. This is Local 4 News this morning. Good Monday morning to you. I'm Alexandria Ikamoni. And I'm Redrick Terry. Thanks for joining us for Local 4 News this morning. The couple involved in a tragic scuba diving accident has been identified. The woman died who has been identified as 53-year-old Susan Wynn of Kildeer, and her husband is still missing but believed to be dead at this point. He's been identified as James Wynn, also 53. Brendan Cullerton explains where the investigation is now. The U.S. Coast Guard got a call this afternoon for a scuba diver unconscious floating in the water. The dive charter uh, pulled that person on board, uh, began doing CPR. We launched our 45-foot response boat for here in Milwaukee, and a helicopter uh, for the Coast Guard launched from the air facility in Waukegan. The first diver was later pronounced dead at the Coast Guard station, but the diving expedition was not able to stop right away because the divers were 300 feet underwater. When we picked up the first diver, uh, they still had three divers in the water, so the dive boat obviously had to stay on scene. Uh, the depth that they were diving required decompression stops to come back up, uh, so they obviously couldn't leave the scene with the divers in the water. The Coast Guard later got a second call that one of the three remaining divers was separated from the group and missing. We thought the first case was kind of a standalone, um, and then when we found out there was a second person missing, our boat went out, uh, the helicopter refueled. Milwaukee police are now taking over a criminal investigation and were photographing scuba equipment of the diving boat, the Alma, which returned to the investigation scene. The Coast Guard wants to stress safety when utilizing Lake Michigan this summer. Boating traffic is going to increase. Recreational use of the lake is going to increase. We just want to remind people to be safe, check your equipment, let somebody know where you're going, and just be safe on the water. Now this weekend was hot, but that didn't stop volunteers from cleaning up the streets. Bags of trash and piles of debris were collected for the extreme cleanup. Now Saturday's volunteer day is in response to the record flooding across the Quad Cities. Volunteers tell Local 4 News they wanted to help even though the flooding is done. And for those getting that help, this goes a long way. Kind of get back to a little bit of normalcy around is, is nice because when we just finished this wall over here on my west side, I was going to cry because it's been up for so long and um, it was a relief to know it was gone. The amount of debris and the sheer quantity of things that we have to get rid of, not only just the river water and the turf recovery, but just trash and items like that. You find anything and everything that has washed up over the, the last two to three months. Now, more than 200 volunteers worked across six locations, including Buffalo, Davenport, Hampton, and Moline. A place that hopes to expand the mission of Speak Out Against Suicide will soon open in Clinton. Not having people to talk to, not feeling like you belong anywhere, um, and just having like something to go to that has purpose and meaning, um, and that's what this room's about. Hope Haven has been a goal for the group the last couple of years. It's at the Gateway Area Community Center. Organizers say they'll also have support groups for people who've lost someone to suicide and for teens. The founder of the Community Center says the reason he formed the nonprofit was the impact suicide has on the area and on him. In 12 in this area, there was a high, high rate of suicide by teens or teen suicide. And um, it was unfortunately, a lot of them hit close to home. The community center provides activities aimed at kids, including boxing, music, and a gaming room. Well, did you fill up this past weekend? If not, gas is now a little more expensive for you on the Illinois side of the river. The new gas tax starts today, doubling from 19 cents to 38 cents a gallon. Now, lawmakers say the state's transportation system is the sixth largest in the nation, and the funding from this bill will keep it in the best condition. And there are a few more high-profile laws that go into effect in Illinois starting today. The age to purchase tobacco, e-cigarettes, or alternative nicotine products increases from 18 to 21. The new texting while driving law goes into effect as well. Using your phone while driving or even holding it will result in a moving violation if caught. Now to politics now, President Trump wrapped up his trip to Asia with a surprise, historic visit to North Korea. He met with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un there for more than an hour. Yes, Stephen Portnoy has the latest in this morning's national headlines. 
The president returned to Washington at dusk Sunday, capping a dramatic weekend of talks aimed at restarting stalled negotiations. At the 38th parallel, Mr. Trump made history, becoming the first American president to set foot on North Korean soil alongside dictator Kim Jong-un. Stepping across that line was a great honor. The pair met at the demilitarized zone for nearly an hour and agreed to restart denuclearization talks. What's going to happen is over the next two or three weeks, the teams are going to start working to see whether or not they can do something. Mr. Trump insists his personal relationship with Kim has made the Korean Peninsula a safer place. After our first summit, all of the danger went away. But talks with the North haven't budged since the failed summit in Hanoi, Vietnam in late February. The president walked away from the table when Kim demanded sanctions relief. Getting back to talks with the North Koreans is important, and I think that's a good thing. The second perspective, though, is this comes at a very high cost. The pictures of Kim standing side by side with the American president could boost his legitimacy on the global stage. On Saturday, as Mr. Trump met in Japan with Chinese President Xi Jinping, he agreed not to impose new tariffs on Chinese imports and to continue working toward a broader trade deal. But as in the case of North Korea's nuclear program, a final agreement with China appears far off in the distance. Stephen Portnoy, CBS News, Seoul. The president's daughter and son-in-law, Ivanka Trump, and Jared Kushner, both senior White House advisors, were also there. President Trump ended the visit by telling reporters that he has invited Kim to Washington. If you're trying or if you're traveling this 4th of July holiday weekend, you're one in millions. Americans are expected to travel in record numbers this Independence Day. AAA predicts 49 million people will be on the move. Now that's nearly 2 million more travelers than last year. Federal prosecutors examining the Boeing 737 MAX aircraft have now expanded their probe. It now includes the 787 Dreamliner as well. According to a report published in the Seattle Times on Friday, the Department of Justice has subpoenaed records related to Dreamliner production in South Carolina amid claims of subpar work. The investigation into the Boeing 737 MAX came after deadly crashes involving that aircraft in Ethiopia and Indonesia. The LGBTQ community celebrated Pride in New York streets. An estimated 150,000 people marched with about 4 million spectators. Now, Sunday's event commemorated the 15th anniversary of the clash between police and gay bartenders at New York's Stonewall Inn. The uprising sparked the modern gay rights movement, and the Stonewall is part of the designated national monument. Pepsi wants less plastics filling up landfills. The beverage company says it'll ditch some plastic bottles in favor of more aluminum cans. And that includes its water brand, Aquafina. That change could happen next year and could cut 8,000 metric tons of plastic waste. Pepsi CEO says cutting down on plastic waste is a top priority. The company plans to only use recyclable and biodegradable packaging by 2025. The skies are filled with impressive planes and talented pilots this past weekend. The 31st running of the Quad Cities Air Show returned, which was on a break for the last three years. The prop acrobatic plane left spectators in awe with the stunning show. It was just one of many on display for people to see. Now, the main event of the weekend was, of course, the Blue Angels. Wow. Just, just watching some that. of the, uh, <laughs> yeah. watching some of the flips and twists and Ooh, dips and turns that are dizzy. going on there. Look at that. Man, this one was man amazing. alive. Look at that loop. Makes me dizzy. And now upside down there. And, oh, man. It's just incredible to see what yes. these pilots can do with these mm -hmm. aircraft. Uh, however, <laughs> being inside of that just doesn't seem like a very good thing. <laughs> yeah, so. not at all. I couldn't do it. I would get really dizzy and nauseous from that. Oh, yeah. And then especially in the, the jets and stuff, you get the G-forces, too, <laughs> or even just the prop planes if you're flipped upside oh, down and stuff. Yeah. You probably feel it just a little bit. Yeah, cool stuff to watch, though, at least. Mm. Uh, and it was a little bit hot outside this weekend for everybody out at the air show. Right now, Pinpoint Doppler Radar, we're mainly looking at storms off to our north. Highway 20 and back towards Dubuque in northeast Iowa seeing some thunderstorms. So if you're in far northern Jackson County and Joe Davies County, you've already seen a little bit of rain. You're going to see some more here in the next hour or so. Otherwise, the rest of us are just seeing the clouds that have blown off of those storms off to our north. We'll see a clouds through at least a little part of this morning. Temperatures in the low 70s right now. As long as those clouds don't hang around too long, wouldn't be bad if they did, though. We no. get up into the lower 90s this afternoon with enough sunshine. Isolated storm chances going to feel even warmer than that. Lower 70s tonight, still pretty muggy out.
Yeah, not often that we're rooting for the clouds, but it seems like that might be the case today. Yeah, we'll just have to see how long they can hold together. If they do, maybe upper 80s instead of low 90s. That'd be nice. Still kind of warm. <laughs> <though. laughs> Coming up, do the Cubs come out on top against the Reds in the series? Nope, but Dan Vasco will tell you about it and more <laughs> next in sports. WHBF is local for you with Red Rick Terry, Alexandria Ikemoni, and meteorologist Ash Simpson. This is Local 4 News this morning in high definition.